Shadow Cabinet Office, Office Minister Rachel Reeves joins us live from Westminster. Rachel Reeves, uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Just remind us exactly what you are calling for this morning. What do you want to see in place now to, to try and put a stop to this, in what people will call corrupt lobbying? We've got a vote in the House of Commons today, and that's an opportunity for MPs in all parties to vote to have a proper inquiry, a special select committee of parliament set up to look at what's happened with Greensill. But actually, it's much, much wider than this. It's about lobbying, it's about sleaze, it's about cronyism and corruption, and it's about access to ministers, not because of what you've got to bring to the table, but because of whose telephone number you've got, what contact lists you've got. And it's not the way that government should be done. Well, it's undermining I mean, they, they, faith they in our democracy. Promised. They have promised, haven't they, an absolute carte blanche, a maximum access to ministers in this. Why is that not enough to you, particularly as it doesn't appear that David Cameron has broken any rules? Is it the rules that need changing, in your view? Or is this an element of politics, of wanting to get him into a select committee and all parties to have the chance to grill him. I think it's so important that the government doesn't just mark its own homework here, that there is a proper investigation chaired by somebody who commands the respect of politicians across the House, but also the public, and that the remit of the inquiry is broader than what the government has so far set out. The government has said there will be an inquiry into what happened at Greensill. Well, we know that the issues go much wider than that. We've seen during the last year a VIP fast lane set up so that if you've got access and contacts, you've got it easier to get a contract to make PPE for our, our frontline workers. It, the health secretary's pub landlord got a contract because he WhatsApped him. Those sorts of things just shouldn't be happening. Okay. Uh, and also the inquiry that the government has set up is being chaired by somebody who David Cameron knows. David Cameron appointed him to be a trustee of the British Museum when he was Prime Minister. The person chairing the inquiry is also a serving non-executive director at the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, which is implicated in all of this because they were responsible for some of the lending which Greensill had access to. Uh, well, so well, it needs to be a broader inquiry that looks at the rules and tightens them up. If Rachel, that is what Rachel, it Rachel where, where, are you, where are you drawing the line? Because David Cameron will say that he was working within the rules and you're simply saying, well, we're going to change the rules. But where do you draw the line? Should Tony Blair give, a, give back some of the two and a half million pounds he uh, apparently earned with working for JP Morgan? I mean, he's earned... They, they said at one point back in 2008 that Tony Blair could earn £20 million. He was Prime Minister of this country. He could be texting anybody at any moment. And, and why shouldn't he? Those are people he's worked with. But at the same time, he earned millions. Should he give back some of that money now? What we need to see is proper transparency. And Labour have proposed... That's not, no, that's not an answer that... to the question. Rachel, but that's not an answer to the question. But, but this yeah, is no, about no, but using is... your position. But, but, yeah, but so did Tony Blair abuse his position? Well, if Tony Blair was, um, was, was texting ministers and asking for special favours for businesses he was working for, that would be unacceptable so, too. OK, so, so if we look, can we look, can we look back are. at Tony Blair's records, of his phone records, in 2008, 2009, when he was getting two and a half million pounds from JP Morgan, when he apparently he earned two million pounds a year from Zurich, the Swiss financial giant, if at the same time he was texting ministers at that point, when he's no longer in office, is he therefore breaking the rules? And therefore, should we have an inquiry into Tony Blair right now as well. If anyone has got any evidence that other former Prime Ministers have been using their status to access uh, special treatment for firms that they're working for, they should be investigated. But there are no accusations, no, as far as I'm aware, about there, what there Tony Blair did. But, 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 but this but is broader. Sorry, but, but, the, but the problem is, isn't it, is that it, it, it feels like something is up here and everybody's clamouring to expose David Cameron no, uh, and, and for doing something than David wrong. David Cameron, Kate. Sorry? This is much broader well, indeed, than is, David because Cameron. Because you're you're Labour about... MPs you're... have called for... Sorry, Adel, just one moment. Labour MPs have called for Unite to hold inquiry into the cost of a hotel project which saw the main construction contract being awarded to a friend of Len McCluskey. How far do you go, was Adel's original question, because most people in their work rely on the contacts they've made through their experience and the experience 
that they've gained. And these are the people these people have worked with. You know, okay, what me... do we expect the Prime Minister to do once he leaves office if he is part of the rules? And how far do we go back through time and look at the behaviour of others? Well, Kate, one of the things that Labour have recommended that the government could do very easily would be to tighten up the rules about lobbying that former ministers and prime ministers and civil servants can do. At the moment, if you um, um, are a consultant lobbyist working for one of the big lobbying companies, you have to register as a lobbyist and declare all the meetings and the contacts you've had. But if you are employed in-house by a company to do exactly the same lobbying, you don't have to be on that register. And that is why uh, David Cameron is saying, I didn't break the rules. Now, if it's the case that Cameron didn't break the rules, I think that says something about the rules and that those rules need to change so that there is proper transparency so we can see what former ministers and prime ministers are doing. And if they are lobbying, they should have to declare that work and they should have to declare those meetings and the contents of those meetings. That would be a simple thing to change. And that is one of the things that I hope that a special select committee set up to investigate this would recommend. And MPs have a chance today. They have a chance today to vote, to have a special select committee, to take evidence in public, to be able to require and, and to summon witnesses, but also documents, and to get to the bottom of this. This is much wider than just about what David Cameron but, has so, done. So, this is about uh, what's happening at the heart of government today. We need answers, we need changes to the rules, and we need to do everything we can to ensure that something like this never happens again, because it undermines trust in our democracy. And at the moment, tens of thousands of jobs are on the line because of the collapse of Greensill Capital, including in Hartlepool and Rotherham, important jobs in our steel industry, which is such an important part of our manufacturing sector. So this really matters. We need answers and MPs have a chance to vote for a proper inquiry today. Supposedly, this would mean that Labour MPs as well would be a part of this, this new rule system as well, right? And former Labour ministers. So you would have no problems in inquiries and investigations in former ministers, particular prime ministers of this, of this country, if, if it was felt that there was some concern. And only to check, only an inquiry, only an investigation, it may well be that former ministers have, have played the cards and played their cards very well. But you would be in favour and you would support an investigation across the board. Very much so. And I believe that this inquiry does need to be broader than just what happened at Greensill. Okay. What's happened at Greensill is appalling and I think disgusts many, many people, including myself. But this is broader than what's just happened at Greensill. Week after week, there's a new scandal about, uh, about the awarding of contracts. £2 billion worth of contracts in the last year have gone to friends and donors of the Conservative Party with no contract process, uh, no transparency uh, about how they were awarded that work. So this is broader than Greensill. Okay. This and, needs to and look I think at in cronyism and lobbying in the round. You could look back round. and see that on all sides. But you make a very strong argument. It's good to speak to you this morning, Rachel. We've got Thanks Andrew Pearce and, and Kevin McGuire here in the studio. Andrew, you've written a very big piece in, in your paper this morning where you wonder if there isn't an element of revenge <clears throat> going on here from Boris to David Cameron. You have to understand about these two men, both old Etonians. Boris was older than David Cameron. He was the cleverest at Eton. He won all the academic prizes. So he thought he was going to be king of the world. That's what he used to say. Then they went to Oxford. David Cameron became the, the cleverer one. David Cameron, they became MPs at the same time. Yeah. By 2005, Cameron was leader of the opposition. 2010, he was prime minister. And Boris was just the mere old mayor of London. Not quite the same. They've been rivals like this for years. There's no doubt Boris knows this stinks to high heaven. But there's also an element from people I've spoke to say he's getting one over Cameron, his old adversary. The points that Rachel, uh, Rachel Reeves makes there, um, it, it, it's going to be a complicated one, isn't mm. it, to unravel? Because uh, everybody feels a bit uncomfortable about the idea, it, you know, never mind the rules or the law, of somebody having influence over for their personal gain. You know, and we can look into details. May the front pages have looked at other employees that may have been working the time while at Whitehall. Obviously, that does not look right. But on a human level, most people in their work 
use the people they know to get further work. If we left here tomorrow, you'd have a mate that you worked with 10 years ago that you'd say, oh, I've got any work, you know. Mm -hmm. That is what happens. Yeah. So it's very hard to legislate for that, but there's something about it that doesn't feel comfortable, yeah. does it? But the difference wouldn't... here is public money we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you wouldn't this be getting... Not, this is not but a not private leave, sector. There isn't. Tens, not potentially leave, hundreds of millions of, of, of public money, taxpayers' money, and it, look, it's a case here, quite clearly. It's not who you are, it's who you know. Yeah. But that's and true of a lot Cam of work, yeah, isn't and, it? But Cameron, who was a Prime Minister in an incredibly influential position, has been using those inside contacts, I think in a very yeah. sneaky way, contacting the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, on his private number, mm. on his mobile phone, may not be covered by Freedom of Information disclosures. He now accepts, Cameron, that he should have used more formal ch uh, channels. But he was, he was lobbying them all. He took Lex Greensill, who, remember, was going to make Cameron a fortune. He took him for a private drink with Matt Hancock, the health secretary, and then Greensill's company gets a big juicy contract. Well, that's um, not that drink, by the way. That was them uh, in Saudi Arabia. But which was very dodgy, very actually. He went oh. to Saudi Arabia, Cameron, mm. with Lex Greensill to lobby for work and money. This was I after... mean, that photograph yeah, itself this, is and quite this was, something, isn't it? This was I mean... after the, the sheikh, after whatever his name is, King Salman... But Mohammed whatever, bin Salman... ...had been named as the person who'd ordered the execution of a journalist in a Saudi embassy. Not only was he executed, mm -hmm. his body was chopped into little pieces. Cameron knew that that allegation was taking place, but he went to Saudi Arabia with this bloke, Greensill, to lobby the king directly for vast sums of money. I mean, we all know politics, you have to do things that don't feel comfortable and don't look good, but there is something about this which, mm. which feels very uncomfortable, it's doesn't the, it? It's the prospect, it's the idea of a former prime minister who's got the best contacts book in Britain, part, probably apart yeah. from the Queen, using it shamelessly to line his own pocket. Now, if Cameron was getting involved to try to set... Greensill Capital was in trouble. Lots of jobs are, in, are, are being affected. If he was lobbying to try and save a company because he's a former Prime Minister for the good of the nation, that's great. But also we know he was in line for a payout of up to 45 million quid. Even Tony Blair never earned that much. And he's earned a lot since he was Prime Minister. Yeah, I mean, a lot. Just on that with, with Tony Blair, and Tony Blair's not the only yeah. one. Remember, Bat Mandelson famously yeah. took a loan, and you know, and, and there's so many scandals in the past. And the general public will say, well, they've seen this before. Yeah. They've heard this before. They've heard an inquiry, and there'll probably be nothing be done. Somebody will resign from it, and that'll be the end of it. And in a year's time, another story like this will pop up again. Maybe something will come out about former ministers in the future. Where does this end, Kevin? I mean, this is corruption. When we look at other countries, we look at other countries, and we often look at African countries, Asian countries, Oh, they're corrupt. They will look at us and say, well, this is a level of corruption. Yeah, I suppose we'd have to separate out, separate out between political corruption and actual illegal financial yeah. mm. uh, sure. corruption. It will never end, in truth, yeah. and we forever chasing it, but you can... Is there a problem it, with the system, it, then? then? I, th well, I think there's a problem with human nature, and, and yes, mm. there is clearly a problem with the system. It has to apply to politicians of all parties, all prime ministers. I've, in the past... Uh, attacked, criticised the grotesque amounts that Tony Blair was making after he ceased to be Prime Minister. Now you've been a Prime Minister, you've got to go and work, you've got to have, well, earn a, a living. Hang on a you contrast you say, him just, to, say, just Gordon on that Brown... Point, there is a difference, isn't there, between giving a contract to somebody because he's your mate and possibly yep. misusing taxpayers' money yep. and leaving being a Prime Minister and making good money, because that's just being a good businessman or having a future career. I feel like there's a difference there but on I both I sides. I don't know how you separate your, your, your political influence in that. Even Tony Blair's situation, he got that job yes, because he, he was Prime Minister. Because, I mean, and because I'm not of the defending contact. anyone here, Why would you pay? Why would you pay a former Prime Minister that kind of money? Well, Especially in David Cameron's he's case, who's not Prime really Minister. that qualified. Yeah, because he's the former Prime Minister. Because of his contacts. Yeah. Because of the Pardon? people he can get you yes, to see. That's... That is using his political clout. And yes. that is the issue. But that's different, I think, isn't it? And yeah. I'm not saying that's comfortable yeah. at all. Why am I suddenly finding myself... No, but, <laughs> no, but you're right. <laughs> I'm but there is a difference between yeah. awarding contracts it's while a, look, in the job to people that don't... I think it's a, it's, this is why we're having the debate. Yeah. It's, it is a... It is but, a, but a the difference here in many ways. is Cameron was trying to get public money, taxpayers' yes, that's money, why it's yeah. different. for the yeah, person who was paying them a shed there, there load a of cash. There is a T Tony though. Blair wasn't doing mm. that as far as we're aware. Yeah. Mm. OK, let's talk about something else. Talk, uh, well, it was very interesting, and I mean, no, I, don't I, know, I just want to ask people at home, you know, in your line of work, whatever you do, mm. if you can ask yourself, honestly, have you ever thought, I'll give a phone call to somebody or I'll text somebody to see if I can get work, see if they can give me that job, and where you personally draw the line? Mm. Because I think... 
even in other oh, walks right. of life, there are decisions to be made about that. It's how Kate's got all her about. work, is it, Kate? Sorry? <laughs> it's like, you've got all your work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cheap. Just calling me. I'm just cheap. Yeah, I'm not very good, but I'm the best you can get for the money. That's the way I'm I remember I knew you ten years ago. Hello. <laughs>